Currently, we are emitting more carbon than oceans, forests or other natural systems can absorb, which is why we are facing a global climate crisis. We've been tackling this problem with renewables for power generation, electrification of our transport system and also a shift to hydrogen as a carbon-free energy carrier. Yet, there is one more important instrument in the climate solution arsenal and that is carbon management. My name is Tina Dauster and I am here in Davos to discuss how this works and why we need this engineered solution to support Mother Earth. And I'll be doing this with Claude Letourneau. He is the CEO of Swante, a Canadian-based carbon capture and removal company. So before we dive into carbon management, let's talk about the reason why. You say Swante is a purpose-driven company. What is your purpose? Our purpose is to um, have a vision of uh, developing uh, what we call a carbon marketplace uh, in order to avoid the impact of human on the climate uh, change. And what could be the impact of a carbon marketplace, of carbon management in terms of saving our planet? Well, carbon is the backbone of our economy. Uh, we, we, we use carbon to make uh, fertilizer. Uh, we're using uh, carbon to be able to make steel, to make um, 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 cement, to build infrastructures. So all of these products that we enjoy and day, in, day in and day out, they all emit CO2. And it's very hard to avoid having CO2 emission and any of these products that we enjoy. So we need to find a way of capturing the CO2, avoiding that CO2 to go up in the atmosphere and, and be able to collect it and safely store it on the ground um, or use it in making other product in a circular economy. Okay, and how does this work? What is the Swante expertise in comparison to other carbon capture companies? Well, Swante expertise is quite unique. We've developed what we call a solid uh, filter to be able to capture the CO2 in a very diluted stream. So when you make uh, concrete, for example, you have a gas coming out of a, of a stack that is quite diluted and there's a small percentage of that CO2, but you need to concentrate the CO2 to pure CO2 so you can do something with it, pipe it, uh, and store it or, or use it. So we've developed this unique filters that is using nanomaterial. So it's a powder that has a very, very high surface area inside the pores of that powder. And we lay this powder on a very thin film and we stack all these films and we create a filter. So very similar to a filter that you would see here in terms of different layers and doing that. So that filter basically becomes the building block to capture the CO2. And you can, you can catch and release and regenerate the filter continuously. So what's unique is we do this thing in less than 60 seconds. We would catch a huge amount of CO2 from a flue gas and concentrate it and be able to deliver this at high concentration in less than 60 seconds. And after that, where is the carbon stored? The, the, the carbon is basically moved into a pipeline, most likely, and then people around the world now, companies, industries, are building CO2 storage hubs where they will basically put the CO2 underground, three kilometers underneath the, the surface, into a water reservoir or a water with, with salt, we call a saline reservoir, and then it will basically make uh, fuzzy waters or, or, or the same way you drink your water today with bubbles, the bubbles or the CO2, it's the same thing. So what needs to be done in regards to carbon management in order for us to save the planet? How late in the game are we? Let's well, it, it's too late to avoid not using carbon. So because we need steel, we need concrete to build infrastructure, we need fertilizer to, meet the pop, to, to feed the population. So we need to capture that CO2 before it goes up in the atmosphere or removing that CO2 from the air from the legacy of 100 years of not doing anything. So what is it, the CO2 carbon marketplace? It's about collecting the CO2, it's about moving the CO2 into a pipeline or in liquids, and it's about storing the CO2 into underground or utilizing the CO2 in different chemical conversion. Okay, and how many of these plants would we actually need to capture the CO2 that we are emitting? Well, the numbers we have is about 10,000 of these plants by the next 30 years that needs to be deployed. Wow. So 10,000, let's say in the next 20 years, we need two plants every week to be commissioned. Okay. And the cost of each one of those is about the cost of a, 
a major airline, so a major Boeing. So it's a 400, 500 million dollar for each of these plants. So it is too expensive or why aren't we using this technology more it, broadly? It is not too expensive. When, when you look at the cost of doing these things, uh, it's the same the example I can give you is the waste management industry. Most people do not know how many waste they generate in their household and they don't know what's the dollar per kilogram to collect that waste. It's built in into the price of the product and services you use. The same way you can do this thing with, uh, with carbon management. It is not too costly society. So if we want to keep enjoying the beautiful view and the climate that we see now, we need to get going quickly. What kind of engagement or incentive do you need or do we need in order to, to install and build what you just described? Well, in order to get the industry going uh, and at the fast pace of deployment that's required because we're, we need to catch up uh, a lot of years of, of not doing anything, um, we, we need basically three sectors to align ourselves, public and private. So industry players like us with innovative technology and companies to have the means of storing the CO2. We need second, the financial market to, to recognize that they have to spend money into developing this infrastructure and, and you've seen this. And, and fourth, we need policies, sustainable policies that says carrot and the stick, that's what I call. So carrot is an incentive to be able to do something and a, and a stick is a tax, let's say on carbon, to be able to get uh, the industry uh, moving because it is difficult for people individually to find a way of doing it. But collectively, if all three work together, we will get this industry done very quickly. Mm -hmm. And would you say there's also a need for, let's say, rehabilitation of fossil fuels? Because uh, presumably those are the organizations with the funding, the know-how, and probably also the motivation um, to drive the Swante agenda, right? Well, the, the oil and gas has been, has been perceived as being the bad guys, mm -hmm. yes, because they're providing, they've provided us with energy that we needed to develop the industry that we have today. So, they want to be part of the solution, not part of the problem only. So what's the solution? They, they today are deploying many, many resources in deploying renewables, in deploying um, electric vehicle, in deploying hydrogen, and carbon management is also the fourth area that they're focusing on. So what, what, where would they be good at? They'd be very good at storing safely the CO2. Remember, they took this fossil fuel from the ground and made product that we enjoyed taking that CO2 back and put it back where it came from, that's their business. What's your outlook, what's your vision for the 21st century with Swante? So I'm a very optimistic fellow. So I, I believe that uh, we will get together and solve this problem in partnership. You know, the solution is here. Mm. The challenges are well understood. We just need to work together to deploy it. So I think we need uh, policies to be very clear about the price of carbon for society, which is about $100 per ton, and, and, and policies that basically allow storage of CO2 in massive way. And, and then there'll be a voluntary price of carbon that will emerge out of this. And then the marketplace will, will regulate itself the same way we have today prices to collect waste management from your home into um, different storage site or use of the waste uh, material, the same industry has to be built. So I'm very confident that this will happen. But two plants every week, you need to get going. That's a lot. Thank you so much for Thank this you. conversation.